Hey Art Nerds, this next project we are going to be talking about something called Linear Perspective. And it's kind of a big mouthful of word, but we will break it down and talk about what it means visually and also just definition wise. But we're going to start with taking a look at two images and I have a question for you. Which of these two paintings do you think has the most realistic space? That it looks like it's a room you can actually walk into and experience. Is it the one on the left where it has uh, the angel and then a lady right there with those nice gold halo things going on? Or is it the gent sitting at this ginormous table all on one side? Which one makes the most sense in space? Like it looks like a real room. If you're thinking the second one, the one with the huge amount of gentlemen at this big table, okay, I would agree with you there. And my reasoning, I will give you two words, linear perspective, okay, using lines to create the illusion of space. And I added those lines in there for you so you can see how we have these lines that are created by like the tops of the windows or the corners of the ceiling or the edge of a table, okay. If we follow these lines, it should lead to a single point. And that's why the one on the left looks really funky because we have the lines in the ceiling meeting somewhere in the back wall. You have some lines that are leading towards the person, some lines that are leading towards the angel. Like the lines are just weird. And that's because back in the medieval period in which the image on the left was painted, perspective wasn't really a thing, okay? It was still something that people have not yet discovered or understood quite yet. Trying to create a believable space was something that was still quite a challenge, okay? Um, on the far right, that second image, Renaissance period, we had the linear perspective was a big thing, okay? Brunelleschi figured it out and he started um, spreading the word and all the artists are like, dude, this is making super awesome, realistic spaces. Let's use it. So they did. And that's why it looks so nice. Okay. So we're going to be talking about linear perspective, how to identify it, how to use it in our own works of art. And then all these extra words, okay, all these fancy art terms that help us understand this process and the steps as we move forward working with linear perspective. So the most basic, okay is line, okay? Because linear, okay? Line, linear, okay? You use line to create space. So we're gonna be talking about line and we're gonna be talking about space. So line is one of those basic art elements and there's a whole bunch of different ones of those, okay? We have horizontal lines, vertical lines, diagonal, zigzag, wavy, curved, dotted, whatever. And we're gonna be focusing on horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines, okay? Those are terms that you need to know and understand in order to be successful um, working with perspective because we're gonna be using these three types of lines over and over and over again. So just quick reviewing these, some of them might be familiar to you. Horizontal lines are those ones that are parallel to the horizon, okay? So imagine, you know, the setting sun in the horizon. So the lines that are parallel or they go the same direction as that horizon line, those are, are the horizontal ones, okay? They're going side to side. Those up and down ones, those are those vertical lines, okay? And they cannot have a slant to them. If you have a slant in your horizontal or your vertical lines, you actually have a diagonal line, which is any line that slants. We're gonna be talking in a little bit about special diagonal lines that we use when we create linear perspective drawings. So the other two types of lines I really want you to understand are parallel and perpendicular. Parallel lines are ones that run in the exact same direction, okay? And you know that they're parallel because if those two lines went on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, they would never crisscross each other because the distance between them is exactly the same always, okay? So kind of like, you know, your keys on a piano or I have my example with the arrow lines that are on the right, okay? Those are two great examples of parallel lines, okay? And we'll be creating parallel lines that run parallel to the edge of our paper uh, a lot of times in our projects. So got to know that one. And then that other one I mentioned was the perpendicular lines. And those are lines that are straight and they meet at right angles. So they create like an X or a T. Um, and those are good examples of perpendicular lines, okay? Ones that go in opposite directions. So if I have a vertical one, I have a horizontal one with it, okay? Those are perpendicular. So uh, horizontal, vertical, perpendicular, parallel, those are words that we're going to be using quite a lot during this unit. So make sure we know and understand and are able to create those types of lines. Beautiful. Now, the second thing I said we were going to talk about is space, okay? 
uh, linear perspective is using lines to create space, okay? And space refers to that distance around between within parts of an artwork, but it also can refer to uh, creating depth, okay, in a work of art. And I have some images below that sort of explain um, visually some different ways that artists create depth or make it look like things are closer to us than other things and uh, also give us the illusion that some things are further away okay we have overlapping where things are overlapping each other so one thing that the one that's closest to us is the one that's in front of all the other objects so that circle on the far left is the one that's closest to us because it's overlapping the other ones adding value shading we talked about this already how that is extremely helpful in making things look 3d especially where you have, you can tell there's a light source and then there's a shadow, all that good stuff. And then we also have the placement of things and things that are higher up in a picture um, appear to be further away than things that are farther down. And that will make a lot more sense when we start throwing things together in a linear perspective drawing. Got a couple more for you. Size, things get smaller as they move further away. Things that are value and focus. So things that are super close to you are super detailed. As things go further and further away, they get kind of fuzzy. Okay, you might notice that if you're, you know, outside in nature, you know, you have the object that, or the tree that's closest to you is super in focus, but then off in the distance, you have like a mountain, it's kind of fuzzy and blending in with the sky. That's value and focus playing a role in real life. Okay. And then we have finally linear perspective, and that's the one we're going to be focusing on a lot. Okay. Um, creating the illusion of space by using lines, right? So we have linear perspective. And that is the mathematical system of creating objects that are created 3D on a 2D flat surface, okay? And this is a bunch of mumbo jumbo right now, but soon it will make sense, I promise, okay? And more specifically, not just, you know, linear perspectives, so lines to create the illusion of space, okay? We're going to be focusing specifically on something called one-point perspective. And it is a type of drawing in which all the lines in the drawing converge at one specific point. Although this definition sounds kind of complicated, the concept is relatively simple. One-point perspective is a drawing method that shows how things appear to get smaller and smaller as they get further away, and converging lines or lines that are coming together, they come towards a single vanishing point on something we call the horizon line. And it is simply a way of drawing objects on a flat piece of paper or other drawing surface, okay, so that they look three-dimensional and realistic. And a lot of times that is our goal as an artist is to try to learn how to draw things realistically. And one point perspective is one of those things that really helps with that. So I have two videos that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, and I really encourage watching them. The first one is by a YouTuber named Draw with Jazza. He does a phenomenal job in explaining how perspective works, and you kind of see a drawing come together using those perspective lines as guides in helping create that realistic space. And then I also have a second one that is super um, interesting using a perspective grid. So having that grid under your drawing in order to sort of help you build it, okay? And um, definitely check these out. Uh, the, both of them are just a little bit longer, but you know, get a taste of it, check them out. Um, links to both of them will be in the description below. So the first thing I really wanna to talk to you guys about is a horizon line, okay? And those horizon lines, this is a line that really separates the sky from the land in a landscape, okay? Or sky from water, okay, in a seascape. And it is referred to as the eye level of the viewer. The horizon line doesn't necessarily have to be right in the middle of your picture. In fact, it's a lot better compositionally speaking or how we organize things in a work of art. If it is somewhere below or even above the halfway point you're drawing, that is like a perfect spot for it, okay? Objects above the horizon line are drawn as if you're looking up at them while objects below are drawn as if you're looking down on them. So this one, uh, our horizon line is separating our land from our sky here, okay? This is our big spot that we're talking about, okay? So it's basically the separation, your vanishing point will be found on this line, and it sort of gives you an idea of what perspective you are looking at the things, whether you are above, below, or looking straight at things, okay? Our second thing we're going to be talking about is a vanishing point, and that is uh, a point that is placed somewhere on the horizon line, and it re represents the furthest point in your picture, okay? And in this one, it is right here at the top of the railroad tracks, okay? And this is the point where all the orthogonal lines meet, which is something that we're going to be talking about just in a short bit, okay? So as I mentioned, it's part that's 
furthest away. Everything converges or meets at that one spot, okay? And those lines that start converging there are called orthogonal lines. And sometimes we call them convergence lines, or we call them vanishing lines, but we're calling it orthogonal for us in class. And these are key when drawing in perspective. They are diagonal lines, okay? Remember I said I was gonna talk about some special diagonal lines, okay? And these lines recede or move further back within the image towards that vanishing point, okay? A perspective grid uh, can have many orthogonal lines or very few of them depending on the complexity of the picture, okay? The more elements in the picture, the more lines you will probably have to include in your grid. And these lines, you know, we can use it to help them mark the tops of things, the bottom of things, okay, the edges, okay, of that railroad track, okay, of the tops and bottoms of trees, the tops and bottom of the house, okay. So these are our construction lines, and these are ones that are imaginary, and we will eventually erase things, okay. That's why we practice drawing our lines nice and lightly, so if we make a mistake, we can erase it. But for this case, we are going to be erasing a lot of them because they're just a guide to help us build or construct our drawing. Now, um, the next one we're going to be talking about is a special kind of lines called transversal lines. Now, these are completely horizontal or vertical lines, and they are um, either parallel or perpendicular to that horizon line, okay? They are, uh, they form rectangles or right angles along the grid, and these are especially helpful when we work with interiors, which since our project is going to be an interior room drawing, this is perfect, okay? And those transversals, notice how they're all vertical or all horizontal, okay? Um, they are the ones that go and connect together our orthogonals, um, which are those diagonal lines that go to that vanishing point. The last big thing I need to talk to you guys about is a vantage point. Now, a vantage point refers to uh, the specific place from which a scene is viewed. Now, this point can actually be very high, referring to the, as like bird's eye view, or it can be very low, and we refer to it as worm's eye view. But it is crucial um, to decide where your vantage point is going to be in the very beginning, because this will affect the placement and size of all the elements within your composition, okay? Because if I want to have a vantage point in which I'm looking, uh, down on something, I need to make sure that my horizon line is way up high, okay, as you see in the third image, okay? If I want something to look like I'm looking straight at it or I'm at eye level, okay, I need to make sure my horizon line smack dab in the middle or pretty close to it. If I want to look like I'm looking up at something or that I'm very short, worm's eye view, I need to have my horizon line far lower, okay? And you can see in those three images how it vastly changes, okay, um, that vantage point changes depending on where that horizon line and that vanishing point are located, okay? Very important. We're probably going to be focusing more on that central one, okay, where we're looking straight in on something. And that'll make a whole lot more sense once we start uh, constructing our perspective drawing. Now, we have a couple of things I just want to throw at you, okay? Um, Two-point perspective, that is a special type of perspective where we're using two sets of orthogonal lines at two vanishing points, okay? Explore it if you feel like it, but I just want you to know that this kind of thing exists out there in the artistic world, okay? And then we also have even three-point perspective, which is pretty wild, okay? And um, it's very good, especially for like that worm's eye view, so really looking like you're way far down, okay? But this uses three sets of orthogonal lines, three vanishing points. Um, if you ever get really interested in perspective, perspective, one point perspective is like level one, two point perspective, like level two, three point perspective is like level 78. Okay. It's pretty wild. I don't play with it too much. Anyways, I have some examples of some student work that I want to really share with you, giving you a kind of idea of the direction that we're heading with this project. Okay. So um, we're going to be doing some room drawing. So you're going to be having, you know, you have a room space, you have a bed, you have a desk, you have a window, you have some sort of shelf, okay? And, you know, a couple other items in there making it look unique to yourself. There might even be a theme in yours, okay? This one has like a beach theme going on, okay? But, um, you know, adding some extra details can really make it like pop, okay? We have, you know, it looks like uh, we're on a second floor building, okay? Because you look out the window and you see more windows. So it looks like they're higher up, okay? This one has a lot of crazy stuff going on, a lot of small details. You got some BTS up there. Love my K-pop, okay? And then this one, uh, you know, filled up with a bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of books on the shelves. There's a lot of plants. So you can really tell a lot about the person based on the objects that they include in the room, which is really cool. Now, the big thing that we're going to be focusing on with this project, as we do the whole rest of the semester, is to draw what you see, not what you know, okay? We are going to be, for sure, 
gathering some reference pictures, okay? Because we want to have that as a guide to help us to accurately recreate these um, objects in our room using, using perspective. So um, these are some images that I'm using for my example, okay? And there's some of the things that I have that are like extra fluff just uh, to fill up space and add some cool stuff. And then there's some things that we need to absolutely have, okay? Now, I highlighted the ones that you need to have in your space, okay? You need to have a bed. It is a bedroom, okay? Where are you going to sleep, okay? I kind of have like this, you know, couch looking thing. That works out just fine. If you want to sleep in a hammock, works for me. Sleeping bag lying on the floor, perfect, okay? Whatever you want for your space, okay? You need to have some sort of dresser, okay? Or a closet. You need some place to stash your clothes or other random stuff that you have in your room. So get some sort of uh, dresser or closet. You need to have a shelf, okay? Whether it is to collect your snow globes or collect your video games, whatever it is, books, um, plants, whatever you want, you need to have some sort of shelf. It can be a big wall shelf. It could be a tiny little thing, whatever it is, okay? You have a lot of freedom there. You need to have a window, okay? I'm pretty sure it, by law, you need to have a window in a bedroom for like fire safety stuff. So we're gonna make sure we throw one of those in there as well, okay? And then finally, the last required item is you need a desk. Okay, you need some place to do your homework, okay, or maybe some place to set down your TV. Perfect, works for me. Uh, a couple of the extra things that I added, I added a lamp, I added um, a chair, I added a hardwood floor because that'd be fun. And then, you know, adding light fixtures from the ceiling, fans. I have some extra details in my ceiling, which took me forever. I don't recommend it unless you want to put forth a lot of time, okay. I included that in mine and it actually turned out pretty cool, really fun. So we're going to be gathering some images to use for this assignment to really help us out. Okay. And here are the big things that we're really thinking about. Okay. You are focusing on one point perspective. So I want you to understand perspective, having orthogonal lines meet at a vanishing point. I want you to create the illusion of space, having things overlapping in your room, things getting smaller as they move further away. I want you to add those details. Okay. We have a couple that are required, but fill the rest of the space with things that make it look believable, like it's a lived in space. Okay. Whether it is really uh, a good illustration of your room or your dream room or whatever. Okay. And then also we're going to be talking about using value, but also uh, using a light source. So creating the illusion of that light source with the value that we create in our work. So uh, stay tuned for more information and more details as we move forward, especially videos on how to use this perspective stuff because it can get kind of tricky sometimes. So that's all I have. I hope this video was really helpful for you and is a good start in our linear perspective unit.